Hey guys, what's happening? So, got another uh, X1 carbon here to fix from Bambi Labs. So, customer says one day it just stopped working. So, he wasn't really sure what was wrong with it. Um, but I'm starting to notice a pattern failure with these this Bambi Labs AMS system. So it seems like it's either the, uh, it usually ends up being the, either the buffer spring or the magnet being the wrong way. Um, or the filament sensor. So typically it seems like the, it's the filament sensor or the the, the, fil the buffer spring. Um, sometimes there's, there's parts in there, jams in there. Um, but I should be able to know pretty fast because what happens is when the filament goes fed, when, when the filament gets fed up to the extruder, I should see the drive gears moving. So if I don't see the drive gear is moving as soon as the film gets to the top, then I know it's the filament sensor. The filament sensor didn't detect the film come in, so it's not driving the gears. But if you have the drive gears, if it, the film comes up to the top, right, and the drive gears are moving, but it still doesn't load, it's usually the buffer. So, um, all right, let's take a look. Let me fire this up. All right, so if you're not aware, um, I, I fix these these personal printers like on my off hours, after hours, and on the weekends. So right now it's Saturday, so I'm fixing this printer. But a lot of the business printers I fix during the day, I can't even film videos on it just because it's typically it's an R and D environment, it's classified environments. But I can't sit there and go, hey, by, by the way, I'm filming a YouTube video in your in your business in your R and D environment. It's just not going to fly. So yeah, I just do this after hours now, personal stuff. Just too busy with with business stuff, IT and uh, yeah, business stuff. You know, I wish 3D printing manufacturers would put the power switch on the front. Let me show you. So when I got this Trudum printer, when I got it back, um, I actually bought it off a, a customer that had done a clipper upgrade. Because I knew it wouldn't be able to reach behind there to get the power button. I moved the power button. I was on a little box. I moved the power button to the front of the printer. So I can turn it on and off here. I don't have to reach around it to turn it on and off. Yeah, so I was hoping they were, I, mean, I was hoping they'd get a clue maybe. <laughs> the 3D printing manufacturers like nobody wants to wrap around. I'm just venting here, but you know, because people are gonna be coming from the printer around to grab the button. So let's put the power button in the front here. Alright, so first thing came up, it may be detected lead screws. Need some lubrication. I wonder how they know that. Motor feedback, resistance, like the amount of current it's taken to move. They know how much current they're supposed to be drawing from the motor um but i think this as far as i remember when i took the other one one of my other carbon uh bamboo labs apart it was just one drive motor in the bottom running all three lead screws um, um no i don't want to do that i'll just throw a little actually my little tri flow just a little bit sometimes if the grease gets uh this will loosen up some of the grease if they're using grease just a little bit um, grease gets hard over time sometimes. Just a little bit. This will actually, if, it is, if they are using grease, this will kind of break up, the, free the grease up a little bit. It just basically thins out the grease a little bit. Um, okay, so let's see here. AMS, that looks about right. I'm going to do some self test here. Alright, I'm going to do some self test here and see what happens. Start self test. Actually, I need to get some better light in here. Maybe I'll hook my light real fast. Alright, let's do the self test here. It's been going for a while. Just so want to make sure everything looks good before I start troubleshooting the extruder loading mechanism. You know, I don't know if you guys like the whole troubleshooting process or if you just want to see me show you fixing the problem. Because I don't even know what the problem is myself. I'm just looking at it. Alright, let's do a home. And I'll see if I can load a filament and see what happens. Long out, network. Alright, I gotta get used to this. Alright, let's load something here. Right, should be heating up the temp. I always forget all the process. I think what it, I, I can't remember if it goes to cut the filament. I mean, I should, know. is that lock up maybe? I don't know what this thing's done. It's in here. You probably will both see that. It's probably gonna wash it out, but. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'd, I'd like it to have more of a status in the front where I could see like the temperature with the nozzles doing. All right, so something stopped the process. Almost like it didn't even load. So, hmm. 
I rebooted it because it seemed like it was an air conditioned. So at least it stopped responding correctly. So I'm going to check up here. I'm going to pull the filament out and reload it. So it should actually like, I mean, depending on the firmware, I guess, but it should grab, the, once I pull the filament out and load it in, it should grab it. It pulls it in and pulls it back out. All right, now that it's booted. There it goes. That's what I'm expecting right there, you know. It wasn't doing that before. Okay. So I don't think he's actually played with this printer for a while. I think he said he did, it broke and he stopped playing with it. So I'm going to update the firmware in this thing. And then come back. And got the firmware updated. Um, yeah, I like the new interface better. That's cool. Um, okay, let's see. I'm going to do a quick load here. Let's load the one. Cut filament, pull back, current filament, there's nothing loaded. I gotta see there's a piece broken in there somewhere. Yeah, because I know that the red film is getting kind of brittle. Alright, so it's telling me to pull the film on the back. Um, yeah, there might just be a broken piece of filament in there. So I'm gonna flip it around and see if I can see something. Like I said, there could be a broken piece of filament in, sitting inside the filament sensor. Alright, so since nothing's really happening with the head here, I power it off. I, could, I, I mean, as far as I know, I can't find a place to disable the motors. So I just had to turn the thing off. I'm going to look at this real fast. Um, and then... Yeah, I'll get some light over here. So I'm looking at the, is the filament sensor. So this it looks like the exact same... Well, that might be a slightly different, but... It looks very similar to the uh, PS1, the filament sensor. Like, the filament sensor looks the same. But the uh, cabling looks different. All right, so that looks good. I'm gonna pull this film out here. Just remember, just check the basics first. All right, so I hope you guys can see that, but I, I can see a piece of broken film on there. I'm gonna be able to grab this on the camera. I'm gonna use my little needle and see if I can get it. If not, then I just gotta pull the filament sensor out. Turn my right hand here. <laughs> I'm useless on my left hand. There we go. Yeah, so that's what happens sometimes when the filament gets brittle, it will, it will break off. So let's try to do another load. I should put the PTFE tube back in. Yeah, like I said, it's always the filament sensor or like the buffer on these things. So, all right, let's uh, fire it up and do our test. All right, let's do another load. Um, actually, let's do the white filament. That seems like a newer spore. It's full. Load. And right, we'll come back. The light is loading. Alright, right it's in there. Let's see if it's purging. I mean I might have to take it apart if I'm not if it's not purging. Purge old filament. Let's see if I can get the light in here. Factory light's not not great. Okay. Come out. Oh no, I, I actually do see white film come out now. It's kind of hard to see back there. Okay, cool. I'm gonna do a test print just to make sure. I'm gonna get some alcohol cleaner. Build sheet off. Like I said I've already updated the firmware. So okay, cool. I mean that was I mean that was basic. <laughs> no broken parts, you know. Um, all right, let's do a test print. Do a quick print. Um, I guess a bench or whatever's on here. I don't feel like slicing something new. I normally like to do a calibration cube, but all right. PLA. Um, actually, let's change that to. Okay, well, I guess the blue one. I don't know. Um, let's give me the option for. Um, oh, PLA. Um, yeah, I guess the white is PETG. So maybe I could go, I can choose the, I'll just try the blue. Alright, um. Alright, so I love the blue filament. It's purging right now, at least it should be. Purging with blue filament. 
Okay. All right. See the white coming out. And wait a second. I'll see the blue. Okay. Can't see it there. Okay, I think that's the blue coming up. Alright, it's gonna start to come back when it's done. Yeah, sometimes I forget. There's, doing a bamboo lab sprint is quite the process. <laughs> they do like a full calibration. Um, yeah, it's sort of an, I don't know. I mean, every printer has their own issues, but I mean, that can really make it, you know, if, you, if, a, if a print fails at startup and you gotta restart it, you have to go through this whole process again. Okay, looks like it's putting down a layer. It's weird how it purged in the back. I, I kind of prefer that it purges in the front. Well, I guess it did, did it purge in the front. Oh, it did some kind of like, okay, the calibration in the front here. Because if it purges in the back, it'd be harder to get to. Yeah, man, I thought I was printing out a Benchy. <laughs> What's up with that? This is some odd stuff going on. It's actually the G code, not the printer. And there it is. And what's interesting about these people is actually they were one of the first companies that perfected carbon fiber rods. And actually finding prepared rods like this, is, they're kind of difficult. Yeah, if you're, not, if you're new to my channel, I designed a printer called the Celeritas, which is a speed in Latin. It runs carbon fiber rods, but it's a cross XY design. Yeah, I had to do a lot of prep work for these carbon, carbon rods to get them smooth. Um, Okay, all right, so I'm not sure if you guys like this format or not. Me troubleshooting the printer from scratch because I don't even know what's wrong with it myself, you know? I just, or if you just rather go, okay, well, if this happens, then this happens. If this happens, then look at this, you know? Or if you'd like to see the troubleshooting process. All right, cool, another 3D printer fixed. So if you're wondering what I charge for something like this, I mean, I spent less than an hour figuring it out, so I think about like 50 bucks. Like I said, I don't, the personal ones I do sort of as like a side thing, you know, on the on the weekends and after hours, so maybe 50 to 100 bucks, depending on how much time I put into it. Just like I said, the personal printers don't cost a lot of money, so I can't even, I can't charge the cost of the printer to fix the printer, so. All right, cool.